You know, I've said in the past that year one exotics were much stronger than current exotics, because they weren't trying to compete with legendaries, but from some of the recent episodes of this series I've made, including this one, I've seen many exotics that contradict that statement. I get that exotics are meant to be unique, and provide bonuses that will have different values depending on how high you value that bonus, but when you have exotics that literally give you more heavy ammo, like Ruin Wings, and other exotics that extend your shoulder charge duration for 3 seconds, like the standicides, it's pretty easy to see that one is better than the other. Putting that aside, in this episode we'll be looking at the Void Fang Vestments, another vanilla Warlock exotic chess piece, which accommodates a niche configuration. In many ways, it is incredibly similar to the Lucky Rise we reviewed in the last episode. It has the same skill tree perks and the same type of exotic perk. To quickly summarize, you can re-roll the Void Fang Vestments to have any increased primary or special ammo of your choosing with a re-rollable incoming element defense perk. Again, like the Lucky Raspberry, the increased armor or use in this subclass perk is fixed, and in this case, it's for a Voidwalker. The exotic perk grants full grenade energy on a respawn, and gives Axiom Bolt grenades an additional seeker. This exotic is definitely optimized for a Voidwalker, given its perks, but since the ability to respawn with grenade energy is subclass neutral, let's briefly consider the other subclasses for potential loadouts. I've mentioned previously that Stormcallers don't have the best grenades, so to dedicate an exotic that is only half effective for this subclass, I'll give it a pass. For Sunsingers, respawning with grenades is nice, especially since you can spec for two of any grenades with the Gift of the Sun perk. But since Fireball grenades aren't what they used to be, and there are multiple exotics that are Sunsinger specific and work directly with grenades, being the Sunbreakers and the Starfire Protocol, I'd also give Sunsinger a miss for the Void Fang Vestments. Alright, so now that we've narrowed down the subclass to the Voidwalker, let's consider some perks. Axiom Bolt grenades is a great start. Also to achieve the full potential of Axiom Bolts, try running Vortex Mastery from the final skill tree. It will improve the tracking range of the Axiom Bolt Seekers, which doesn't necessarily make or break the Axiom Bolts, but it's nice to have nonetheless. Since we aren't going to be using Embrace the Void, which gives health back on grenade and super kills, I'd run Lifesteal on the melee charge, just so you have some means of returning health. And of course you should always be running some form of energy drain booster, either by selecting the Hunger perk or by using an exotic with that perk. Here, select the perk. So now we have a build that is very grenade centric. But personally, when I make a build for something, I like to go all in. Case in point, I'd suggest trying the Memory of Felwinter Artifact to grant two Axiom Bolt charges. Given the damage potential of one Axiom Bolt, throwing two at a target should ensure the kill. Also, you shouldn't have any issue maxing out your discipline and strength using Memory of Felwinter, which is important in this build. Obviously, Axiom Bolts are best suited to PvP, as they don't have great potential against adds in PvE, and the tracking isn't really needed. Although on PvP, the tracking is excellent, as it allows you to completely disengage someone, lob a grenade near them, and let it do the work for you. Places where this is useful? Well, any Crucible game will have its moments, but Trials might be a good choice if you're willing to part with your Nova Bomb, which I don't imagine too many people are, so give it a go in 6v6 Crucible, particularly Mayhem. I played a game on Black Shield with this build, and spent about 4 minutes in the middle just constantly throwing grenades in the doorway. Similarly to what I do with the Wombo Combo and Frosties in Mayhem, the three Seekers can definitely fork off and suppress the other team, and by backing up with another Axiom Bolt, at the very least you'll get a full assist feed. But still, is this really the best exotic to use on a Voidwalker? It's debatable, but if you're a fan of the Axiom Bolt grenades, then look no further than the Void Fang Vestments. I know this isn't a particularly bad exotic, and I have seen a few people use it, far more people than I've seen using the Don't Touch Me's or the Skull of Dyrak and Kara, so I'd suggest giving it a go. I hope I was able to provide you with some insight on the Void Fang Vestments. If you like this sort of thing, feel free to subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next video.